Welcome back. We've got another episode of Film Nerds. We're sticking with the running back position today. We are looking at Mr. Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon has a really interesting story. Uh, been on two different teams, both successful teams, played with some big name quarterbacks. But what does he look like as a prospect for the next level? That's what we're here to discuss today. Nick, we'll go to you. How are you doing tonight first? And then we'll send it on to Jared. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. And this one is exciting because um, when, I, when I do my debris report, I, I reevaluate guys every year. And I wasn't, I didn't expect to like Trey Sermon as much as I liked him coming into this season because, you know, Oklahoma split time. And uh, I was more impressed with him. And then we have our film from today. So I'm going to give that update on how I feel about him after rewatching this year's tape. But yeah, he, I think he's an interesting guy. Jay Wack, what about you? How you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Happy to be back again. Um, this is a guy that I liked coming into the year, similar to Nick, especially because, you know, Garrett and I are Ohio State Buckeye fans. So we needed somebody to fill that um, hole that J.K. Dobbins left and not a yep. big Master T guy. So when I saw Trey Sermon was transferring in uh, and I liked Trey Sermon prior to him, you know, announcing that he was transferring, I was pretty psyched. Um but we're going to get into the film and see, you know, do I still like him as much as people are kind of hyping him up now? Because I liked him as kind of like an under the radar guy to kind of take later in like Debbie drafts and stuff. Sure. Um, and then, you know, the hype, the hype trains kind of got rolling here as the end of the season went on. I mean, at the end of the year in the final three games, he rushed for 636 yards. <laughs> That's a good season for some people. Yeah. He had 331 yards against Northwestern. He set the single game rushing record for Ohio State. He broke uh, Eddie George's record. So really strong finish to the year. Unfortunately, we don't have that game to go over that we didn't have access to that all 22 film. But um, we got some good ones here. We got some good plays to break down. So um, let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. Who's kicking us off? I think we got Nick first. St. Sure. Nick. Looks like oh, here this we go. is um, versus Let's Nebraska. Go. Oh, boy. So so this play, you know, pass pro, and he just gets steamrolled. And the, fields, the reason though? I want to point this out, what you <laughs> said, j -Wack? I said, how about Fields, though, dude? He's yeah, I mean, I, I really like Justin Fields. But the, the, the reason why this is a, a play I pointed out was because of his technique. You know, you have two different things. We talked about this last week. There's two different things that you can do. You can sit back, you know what I mean? Drop drop your weight a little bit and, you know, kind of embrace it. Or you can try and cut the guy. Well, this guy's running kind of out of control and he's lowering his shoulder. That's a guy I think that you just cut. You yep. know, you go right through his thigh board. You can cut him. But he's just waiting back and kind of catching him here. And, and that's not going to be a good outcome. I mean, I, I know it's a DB, but he has a – like almost like a 20 yard running start at you head, head of steam man i mean and at least go into him a little bit but he just catches him and of course this is what's going to happen so just this is i don't know if you guys saw pass pro, but i saw this i'm like man this is noteworthy i hope this isn't his normal technique yeah, yeah. i have a couple plays of uh i think i only have one thing of pass pro and uh now i'm i'm watching the games from oklahoma so this is from 2019 that i'm i'm my games that was you know i don't want to give away my hand but that was one of the few things that actually looked decent in some of the games I watched. So mm -hmm. I don't know which one's real, you know, I, and I won't know until I get, like I said, this year I've committed to doing a minimum of six games each on a guy before I even consider putting uh, legitimate grades on them. So uh, I'm kind of interested to see what your, your guys' games looked like uh, because I had a lot of things that I was like, eh, eh, about, and that was the one thing I was like, well, maybe he's going to be good in this area. So to see that in the first play, I'm like, oh no, that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten through quite a few games of Sermon. I swear, like, there he has, like, a Jekyll and Hyde, like, aspect to him. Like, some games, he just looks like, if, is he is he alive in there? Like, it just seems like he's going through the motions. And then other games, there's, like, he's World playing beer. hard. And he's, yeah, and he's got some burst to him, making people miss. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's strange. But um, third and one here. I kept the down a distance in this time. Uh, well, I think it's important. There's a couple of them uh, where definitely. it is important. Yeah. It gives you context. Yeah. So this one's noteworthy. And I don't know if I'm being too picky here or not. That's why I like to get you guys to play through both views. And then I'll 
kind of come back. So it's third and one. I understand wanting to get downhill right away, but I think he misses the hole. Yeah, can you run that slow for me, Jaywack? Yeah. I mean, I think you go right guard just here. Just inside zone here. Yep. I mean, look at you read you read front side A to back side A, and front side A looks awesome. It's right wide now. open. Yep. yep. Yeah, I mean, you get your one yard over there easily. Mm hmm I mean, look where he fits this in at. I mean, even go backside right here. Yeah, I was going to say backside, you probably get it too. I can't be too mad at a guy for like putting his head down and going, but mm -hmm. you're right. Like there for a guy that I actually coming in was decently high on his vision. There were some plays that I saw that I was very questioning as to kind of what the process was there. Mm -hmm. I guess backside yeah. didn't, didn't get him there, but yeah, I, I, th I saw front side. I was like, wow, this is wide open. That's his first read. He shouldn't have come off of it. True. First and 10 here. Buckeyes are up 10. Start of the third quarter. Yeah, this is outside zone, if I remember right. Yep, yeah. outside zone. And good blocking there. I mean, he's, you know, he's got a really nice alley. But... You know, we talked about this before. I mean, you need to know who you are as a running back. He's he's a strong guy. He can make a move. But here, I mean, he takes how many steps does he take before he decides what he wants Five. to do, which cuts yeah, down he, his momentum. And nothing happens. Yep. I mean, and in, one, out, two, in, out. Yeah. And PFF actually had him graded going into the season at Ohio State. I guess he was one of the he owns two of the top 10 most elusive rushing seasons since 2014. Hmm. So he's a guy that they had graded as one of the most elusive backs going into the season. That didn't, doesn't include this year. Um, and like I said, there are games where he's making guys miss routinely, but like, like here, and I have a couple clips too. He just goes down way too easy. Doesn't really do anything with it. Now, like Jaywack, with with this being from, you know, coming off of his injury, COVID shortened off season, he transferred schools, learning a new offense. Like, how much stock do you put into that with some of this versus, you know, just just missing stuff? Yeah, I put a lot of stock into it because us as being Ohio State fans, we watched every game early right. in the season. I'm like, man, who's who's this Trey Sermon? Because this isn't the guy that I saw on tape last year coming into the year. And um, I, he tore his knee last year midway through the year at Oklahoma. I I didn't find what he tore. I I tried to find through, like, so many different articles yeah. and reports. And, you know, college, in college injuries can be tougher. Yeah, they don't have to report it like the NFL. So I don't know if it was a meniscus, ACL. You know, those are two different levels of severity there. But, right. yeah, he comes into a new team. New coaching staff, new scheme, new language, new offense, uh, COVID shortened season, you know, uh, a lot of different factors playing against somebody starting fresh somewhere. So I think you kind of have to take the earlier games with a grain of salt. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, he really got his stride going, obviously, in the later half of the year for Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And and both of mine, too, by the way. So Nebraska and also Penn State, they're both – early in the year mm -hmm. and i kind of did that by design i wanted to just see what his early season tape was like sure. um but yeah. I, I mean in the end whether it's a new offense or whether it's not i mean you don't want a running back taking five steps to make a move just right that's I natural stuff two. right there right that's not yeah. scheme dependent exactly second and two so this is pretty decisive and I, I know at first glance you're going to see this and you'll be like, man, this is a wide open hole, you know, a nice sift block backside. What I love about this run is when he makes contact right there and how he stays and keeps his feet in bounds, he fights here and gets this extra yardage. Like he could go out right in there. Yeah. He gets, I don't know, Three, four. four or five more yards. Yeah. And and he's he does that twice, two plays that I highlight. And to me, that's two things. One, that's balance, mm -hmm. but two, that's a mentality. He wants to fight for more yards, and I love that in a running back. Yep. Yeah, he's you know, he's one of those guys that's like not super fast, but like he's he's a good athlete. Mm. And you can tell just by like balance and just the way he moves and stuff. 
I mean, Javante last week when we were watching him, it was the same thing. He's not overly fast either, but, you know, you can see some of those same types of things. Yeah, just and I say a, a little bit. Obviously, all these guys are good athletes, right? But sure, you know, we're talking le- relatively comparative speaking. to NFL guys. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I'll play through this one more time. We'll go on to the next one. Yeah, I love those little on things to too, next, Nick. On, on to the next one. First and ten. Forty-five guys are just shitting on Nebraska per usual. <laughs> This is a family show, Jared. I'll be honest. I, I'm sad that Scott Frost couldn't couldn't turn that around. Yeah, me too. I mean, they just lost one Dale too. Yeah, I know. Well, and then think of they lost Spielman the offseason before. Let me run yeah. this back again. Yeah, Spielman staying in school for at TCU. I guess he was pretty banged up for most of the year. Oh, really? Yeah. So with this run, I mean, it's it's a good decision to cut back after his 95 penetrate. Then he sees this next guy penetrate. But w- what is he doing here? He wants to cut all the way back? That's not really the design. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, to me, he cuts back a little bit and then, you know, gets up that alley and it's just a lot of wasted movement. And and this could, you could say this is a scheme thing. Maybe he's not used to the zone running, mm-hmm. but this is a lot of extra steps. And one thing that we talk about with running backs is extra steps is time. Time lets defensive flow happen. And that's not good for yardage and efficiency. Especially the next level where guys are yeah. so much faster. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying keep it skinny here and keep it, keep it upfield. Bend it yeah. back. Well, I mean, one cut now go. Yeah, I mean, he is, he's got a look at that lane. If he goes right to the O there, nobody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no safety help either. Safety Still pretty on the good. Run. Opposite side of the field, he, ru- he runs pretty heavy footed. You know. Hmm. I mean, it's good balance to make that cut, but. Yeah. Penn State game here. Buckeyes up seven zero, third and one. Man, Penn State this year. <laughs> Did not see that coming. They weren't ready. They were not. They weren't practicing. They were bad. I mean, there's some things that didn't practice. They did better without practice than practicing. <laughs> Cleveland Browns did in the playoffs. Hey, who? Yeah. So third so, and one just. So again, third and one, the only thing I want to point out with this run that I like is he, he needs to convert. He found a hole, which unlike the previous third and one. But if you go back to the other angle, Wack. I like, you can watch, watch his feet after he makes contact and watch how much he's fighting, which is a theme that I saw with him. Mm-hmm. He's still just pushing and leaning. And I, this is a guy I think that just wants it. You know, like we looked at the one out of bounds there, we're in the sideline. He's fighting to stay in bounds. Um, and that's one of the things that I always look for is when you see a player do things multiple times, that starts to become who they are, not just a one time thing. Yeah. I, did you guys read the article I sent you about his family and everything coming up? No. Yeah, so I guess... Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, he went through... Him and his family went through a ton of adversity, specifically his mom. She went through domestic violence coming up, and her firstborn son was actually murdered by her by her boyfriend at the time. And I guess she could she didn't like tell Trey until like they were a little older, but I mean... This is a family that that moved from Florida to Georgia and just saw a ton of adversity growing up. Like they they lived, um, him and his sister and his sister's kid and his mom all lived together in like a hotel room for a long time and stuff. So like this is a kid that's seen a lot of adversity growing up. So him being a fighter and just, you know, it doesn't surprise me. Just some little backstory. I'm going to put the... uh, link to that article in the description because it's pretty moving um it's more about what his, what his mom went through and stuff so um i definitely recommend you guys check that out no i was i was reading through some of that as well and it's it does it tells you a lot about a, a person and a lot about you know his his mentality going into some of this because for some for some people this this is just football and for some people it's a, it's a lot bigger than just football yeah right and i guess she's like She's got a couple master's degree and a bachelor's, and she's working on her doctorate. It's 
crazy. Good for her. Yeah. Going through all that. Third and two. I'm oh, second and five. I was reading the timeouts <laughs> left. <laughs> Uh, some of these scoreboards, dude, it takes me a second. I'm like, uh, I mean, five they post things there. in different spots. Wait, the ball's on the five. It's quarter two. Wait a minute, you know? Yeah. Second and five. This one. Do, do, do. This one. All right. So you like this angle again, more? No, I like the other one better, I think. Because here you can see the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Here he... He misses the hole because if you look at the whole picture here, look to the right. Mm-hmm. Rucker sealing down. Number two's got a guy. He's going to be one on one with a corner. And then if you go to the next angle, you can see how this makes no sense. Down, yeah. down, down. I, mean, that, I understand he can't get on the other side. He goes backside of that. Now it's one on one with his backer. Right now, he should be like, oh no, I'm going to cut right. If he reads the block from Rucker, it should be obvious. Yeah. So why why go forward at this point? That's probably six points. Yep. Yeah. I mean, pretty easy six. Mm-hmm. Definitely missed that one. And then, well, and if you go back to that's a heck of a play by thirteen. Watch thirteen avoid here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's a nice play. <laughs> yeah. So linebacker, to me it's just, you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just you just have to like that's a that's a, a quick processing. I needed to make a change, and he just couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple times now where we've seen that. Yeah. I know it's short yardage, kind of, but. Mm -hmm. That's probably his mindset. Go forward. Yeah. Uh, We got second down and nine. They're outside zone. Stiff arm. Now, here's the interesting part stop it right when he gets to the sideline. If you can go a little before that. So, like, I mean, some guys, I mean, this might be enough for them to go out of bounds. I mean. Sure, especially the guy right on his back. Yeah, that's about, that's about a two-yard gain. He, this ends up being third and two. Like, look how far he can stay, again, in bounds. I just thought it was incredible. Yeah, especially when, I mean, body lean. Yeah. If you're from the other angle, you're like, this doesn't make any sense. This one, you know, I know it's like kind of a tough uh, tackle. I mean, this one here doesn't make any sense at all. You're like, oh, out of bounds, like right here, you're thinking, you know? Yeah, yeah. he looks like Miles and, Garrett come around the edge. And leans in. You like that one, Garrett? Oh, yeah. Oh, any Miles Garrett reference. I heard you chuckle. <laughs> he does have some bend. First and 10. You guys need to wake up a little bit, man. You're a little. A little sleepy. Yeah, Nick, you need a beer. Sleepy area. Joe. Me? Yeah. I did I did just have a big meal, man. I had some pulled pork and some lobster mac. What'd you eat for Ooh. dinner, Garrett? Uh what did we eat for dinner? Oh, I, I took my girls cheese. to check I, I took my girls to Chuck E. Cheese. So. Oh yeah, that's right. You called me on your way. <laughs> Chuck E. Yeah. Cheese. So we had Chuck E. Cheese pizza. I don't yeah. mind Chuck E. Cheese pizza. The the regular I don't I don't like, but they have a stuffed crust now. That's actually pretty decent. Chuck E. Cheese pizza is good, man. Yeah, we gotta get the stuffed crust. Salty. <laughs> that was a nice run. I mean, I just love his feet here. If you watch his feet, how light he is, mm-hmm. shifts direction multiple times, feels the defense, and Dude, then this even is the even Trey sermon I love. Right, watch watch the corner here at the end. Number nine, you can watch how he feels the pressure and leans in a way to avoid that one. I mean, that's just, that's nice. I like your tape better than I liked mine. This is early in the year. I know. I had Oklahoma. I thought, I thought I was getting the, the good end of the deal. Maybe, yeah, maybe, like, maybe I just picked two rough games. And I do want to like say like, don't use our film nerds episodes to make your final decisions on these guys. Like this is our input based on six games where we, uh, hand pick all some... separate games that we haven't seen together. Right. Yeah. We hand pick some plays to show you guys to kind of um, familiarize yourself with the player, some pros and cons and stuff that we see, but still go out there, go to the dynasty nerds film room and check out all the different clips that we, that we have on these guys. Cause we have other games and there's other games out there on YouTube and stuff like that. So do your uh, homework. But I will say this Jay Wack. Okay. 
while our evals of six games isn't shouldn't be a final decision, nor should watching highlights yeah. be how you right. form a decision Never. at all. I mean, there, there's a positives, there's a negatives, and then there's a middle ground. Use all of it to formulate your final eval. Yeah. Yep. I never use highlights for an evaluation period unless I'm on the clock in a C to C draft round 30 <laughs> and I need to figure out like who the hell what's the, what's the ceiling. Okay. Yeah. Here well, it is. That, that's it. I mean, I think sometimes you do that just to get a, like, should I even evaluate this guy? Okay. That's the high end. Yeah. And then watch the game. Yeah. yeah. Or I'm in the Cause sometimes those league. big runs are on like second and 15. I mean, there's a, it's a light box and you have to right. think about that stuff. Right. Yeah. And it also happened to be 15 seconds before the half was over. Right. So, right. Nobody cared. Second this one might be uh, nitpicky. 14 here. Yeah. This one might be nitpicky again. Second 14. If you think about what the defense is doing, I was just so disappointed with this play. It so goes disappointed. down so easy, man. Like, I hate that. But there's no one there. Like, go back where, right when he catches this from the other angle, you can see the whole picture. So he catches this on the 15 and he gets tackled at the 10. He gets te- or 20. He gets tackled at the 10. Look at that. How? I know. Cut left here. Right. I know the DN's bearing down on you, but yeah, I mean, dude, that guy's moving. Well, well and he can he could easily split those two offensive linemen too. Yeah, dude, that big boy's moving, man. He he had took a great angle on that. Um but yeah, I mean, it's so disappointing when they go down like that. Mhm. I know he I mean, slipped, it, but right. But it, it shouldn't even come to that. You should read your lineman and cut inside of your lineman always. What foot did he cut off, Nick? Yeah, there you go. Thank, good point. There it is, Nick. Yeah. He almost looks like his leg snaps. Yeah, that, that's not a good looking, not a good looking angle there. That's why he slipped. Yeah. And that's again, that's <laughs> not a quick decision. Like he should have made that decision earlier. Last right. second. Oh wait, cut on this foot and you're done. Yeah. All right, so on to my game here. This one's another one from earlier in the Ohio State season versus Rutgers. All right, let's get into it. First and five. I love that down a distance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the best one. So he's got he's to keep his feet and make this guy miss. You're one-on-one with the defensive back. This is kind of similar to the play Nick showed earlier. It just doesn't seem like he has like a move ready instinctively. What well, can I can I ask real quick? What which leg uh, sustained sustained the injury? Do we know? Mm. Was this right leg or left leg? Let me see if I have that. Here, I'll, I'll look. Well, you you break down your plays. I'll look. Um, I think I have some notes here. Either way, it, it almost seems like at times, it almost seems like it's he's not at full strength. Yeah, and like some of the things that he would he would maybe do, just aren't working just because he's not back to full strength. And that could be combination of of the injury, and chances are he didn't get to do any leg workouts in the off season uh, because of that. So maybe not at full strength with, with that. Sure. The you know just just a lot of that kind of stuff. I I wonder, you know, it, it's it's easy to be negative on some of the stuff, but I do wonder if some of it is just he's just not at full strength yet. And the things that you know when you're feeling a hundred percent with versus feeling eighty percent, you're just not you're just not in rhythm. You're just your lower half isn't communicating to your upper. You're like I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm overanalyzing, overthinking, but that's almost what it feels like to me at times. Nick's got it. Left knee. Okay. Okay. Which is the one that looked funny on the last one when he cut off it off the inside. Yeah. And I Nick's mean, last we said it earlier. These games are from early in the year. We got to take it with a grain of salt. Came off that knee injury. Like Garrett said, you can't, you're not doing any, I mean, you're doing rehabilitation stuff, but you're not doing strength training. Like, like you're, trying to improve your strength you know what i mean i mean obviously right. you're trying to get your leg back but you're not pushing prs or anything like that nope i guess he has the same uh trainer as justin fields him and uh 
Oh, really? Him and Fields go back pretty far. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Probably helps in the recruiting process of getting him to Ohio State. Now, right. does the recruiting process of Urban Meyer in Jacksonville convince him to take Justin Fields number one? Nah. I, I, don't, I don't think, think so. there's any way. It's man. tempting. It's tempting, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, did Urban Meyer offer Trevor Lawrence a scholarship out of college? I mean, out of high school, I'm sure he did. I think everyone same, did. Yeah. There's a connection. Everyone did, but I mean, not but that. To be that's fair, I think everyone thing. offered Justin Fields one too. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, 49 27. Good little run here. Keeps the feet moving. Really like that. Again, similar to a cut up Nick showed earlier. Late in the game, fourth quarter. Just want to keep the clock moving, keep the chains moving. Uh, hits it up in there pretty nicely. I like the. <clears throat> I like his cut inside. Sees the guard get beat. Um, he's able to cut up into a crease there, get the pads down low and just keep his feet moving, keep keep driving. He's a fighter. So this is it for Rutgers. We're going to get into the Clemson tape here next. Yeah. Let's let's get into the good stuff. Yeah, so well, this one of this, the best games of the season. This tape's a little choppy. Okay. Just uh just a heads up. Ooh. Get off me, son. How about Justin Fields see, uh, running down this? See, I will say, like, just even just from the eyeball test, just on this one run, it looks like he has more burst here than Dude, he did earlier. That's what I'm saying. Like, Jekyll and Hyde. He, this whole game, he looked like a different player from right. what I watched against Rutgers. Just for people to know, Referencing last week's film, this that's not Carlos Hyde reference. We're not doing that. It was Ohio State. <laughs> Jekyll and Carlos Hyde. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, I mean, it's a great hole. Um, gets him into the second level. And then you see the balance and the ability to make the first, first guys miss. And then you just see some attitude here at the end of the run, throwing guys off him. How about Justin Fields are running down the field and ca- trying to get a block? Look at him. I love it. Yeah, me too. I love that kid, man. I think he's going to be a real good pro. I do too. But yeah, wide open. But, I mean, here he's got he's to do something, right? Well, I, I really like seeing guys that in the open field – that are able to make guys miss because that's that's when you have the leverage. That's when you have the opportunity. You have it's you and all this space. It's tough to make guys miss in the hole. When they when you can do that, great. Break tackles in the hole, great. But you know, making guys miss in the open field, that's when you have the advantage. And if you're not able to do that, you're not going to be able to do things at the next level. You're not going to be able to be a playmaker at the next level. So as much as that concerned me at times earlier on, being able to see this in his in some of his highlight games, some of his best games, definitely is encouraging. I love the way that when this guy flips up over his back, he just kind of keeps it moving. Like, it doesn't really affect him much. I think yep. that shows his balance, one, and then just his athleticism and strength. First and 10. What's the score here? 28-14. Good, guys. That's right. I, I'm sorry. Can you go back one more time? Sorry. Yeah. No. Like this angle? Just this angle's fine. I mean, just... It takes it takes a mindset and like a... I don't know. Because he, he, he accelerated, you know, when, when he got to that, that level in the second, you know, to try to break that tackle. And it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It takes a little bit of like a, a bravery almost. You know what I mean? Where he's like, I'm going to get hit and I'm going to try to win here instead of going down easy. Like we saw him going down easy earlier. That's a crowd of three guys. And one guy fell down, right. you know, but he was like, I'm ready this time. He's not going to go down easily. Like we saw the two other runs. And, and you know, I, we didn't have the film, but I mean, 
the numbers speak for themselves for the last three games of the Ohio State season. I mean, we saw a different back. Garrett, we watched the games. Like, Mm -hmm. Nick, I don't know if you caught any of them, but, I mean, Trey Sermon was a beast. And, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have those games to break down here. But I highly recommend you guys check those games out. Do the film work yourself. Ohio State's offensive line was definitely very good. It was evident in this this game. Like, some of the bigger runs I didn't even put in here because – he did what he was supposed to do. It was a wide open hole. He he hit it and he scored or got twenty five yards and I think uh Master Teague would have done the same thing, you know. So definitely recommend checking those ones out. There's one other running back on Ohio State history that had some really big games at the end of one season. Zeke? Remember him? Yep. <laughs> How magical was that run? Oh my like gosh. end of the season he had. Dude. The, the, his game against Bama, I think, oh. is the one that will always stick out. Remember that hurdle on the sideline was like, what? That was he was he was on the radar before that, obviously. Right. But that's when he went from like, hey, this guy's pretty good to, yeah, this guy's going in the first round. Like I even remember that year. It was like one of my very early on uh, dynasty years, and I was like, this was before I even knew Devi existed. I was like, am I allowed to draft? I, Early days, man. This I'm was early offended. days for me. Uh, uh, I was like, am I allowed to draft Zeke? And I'll just wait a year. Like, I'll wait a year and not get to use my pick. But can I draft Zeke? I had, like, the, the one overall pick. And I was like, yeah, I just want Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you remember he, he hurdles and his, like, his back pad's, like, flapping in the back because it's, like, half oh, yeah. broke and he's just gone. Yep. He was such a beast. Yeah. Um, so it could be. Saying there's a chance. Yeah, so I, I like this play because there's not a lot of wasted steps. I thought his footwork was pretty good on here. I mean, he, he had to adjust. The hole, the holes here in the middle. 18 and 17 are bearing down, so he decides to bounce it, which I think was a good idea. But he doesn't really waste any steps. He just he, he hits it and gets outside. Um, and then he, you know, Gary, I'm sure you did this drill. You get your hand in the ground, get yourself some extra yards. Good balance. Yeah, that's a good five, six yard difference there. Yeah. Right. Whoops. I mean, even now, even with you know, because he presses and bounces, but even on the DB, remember the the play with me against the DB where he takes five steps. Mm-hmm. Watch this one. Presses, bounces. Screw it. He's just decisive. Yeah, this is who he is. This is who he should be. Jack Coyle and Carlos Hyde. Is there is there an NFL player with the last name Jekyll? Does he remind you of Cam Akers at all? I don't think he's near the athlete Cam Akers is. I agree. Um, but as far as like being like sturdy built, you know, being able to to break tackles and things like that, yeah, I could see that from that perspective. Do you guys have any comps? I'm having a tough mm. time coming up with one. I'll well, give let, you a couple me, minutes and. Let me dig, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a couple minutes. We'll go through a couple I, more. There's one that came to mind, but I don't even know that I love it, so I'm not even sure I want to say it. But, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't I don't have anybody anybody I love yet. I like this run. I like the next angle on this one. I like the way he presses the hole. I'm sorry. He doesn't – he presses the left guard, the B-gap here. And then he cuts. Yep. Cuts right into the hole where he needs to hit it. Um, so what that does is it helps out his offensive line with opening up this hole for him because 71 is able to get a hat on the safety that's coming down. And had he cut earlier, he would have been been probably right in the lap of 13 there and might have gotten taken down. Mm-hmm. So this is and a – that's. Go ahead, Jay. This is a situation where the running back's helping the offensive line mm-hmm. make the I mean, hole. that's that's knowledge, that's balance, that's anticipation, like just knowing how to time that out mm-hmm. scheme. That's all of that. And that might be now he knows how to use zone runs versus before. Right. Uh, do you want to hear my comp? I just checked my dev report from last year. You want to see what my comp was? Wow. Yeah, sure. Now, again, it's always when the guy comes out of college, this is who he reminds me of. Right. I have a TJ Yeldon. Yeah. 
Okay. Hey, a oh. guy I know. <laughs> and dude, I've been watching I mean, football for years. The, the, you you the, come up those, with some shit. Cleveland, the big difference Gary. I think between those those two guys for me is I, I feel like TJ Yeldon had a little bit better wheels. See, I, I, I he ran what are you running? Four six two? Was he that was he that slow? Well, I think dude, if you just rattled off TJ Yeldon's forty and you're right. I'm gonna That's impressive, yeah. If he knew that he ran a four six two, that'd be impressive. Four five two. Four five two. Yeah. Okay. Close. Well close. not really, but I tried. I, we'll close close, close to the numbers. We'll see. I mean, but we'll see what Trey Sermon is. Maybe Trey Sermon's in that same range. One decimal. I think he's like a four five nine, four six. I think he's a, I think he's an upper four fives guy too. Yeah. I think Gervonta's faster. I think, I think so he too. might be too. I think he might be too. Yeah. Uh yeah, the guy that came to mind, I still don't love it. The, it was just the first one that popped in my head was I saw a little, like maybe it's the opposite and now somebody I think is, you know, Sermon might be a little quicker than uh but Ben Jarvis Green Ellis kind of popped into popped into my mind a little bit, but uh yeah, I don't have anybody that I super super love as a comp yet. Yeah, me neither. I mean for the classic Rams comp, I mean, I could see a little Zach Stacy. Zach Stacy. Okay. To maybe like a Greg Bell. <laughs> I was totally with you on Stacy, Greg Bell. Man, just uh, mid 80s, you know. Too old. Greg All right, let's Bell. keep it moving. What number did Greg Bell wear? <laughs> I don't even know. Dang. Me getting Cleveland Gary's number is pretty good. I know. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> All right. I love how you added the film in for our last. This is so classic. Yeah. I was surprised I could find one. So let this play run, but um, I love the little jump jump yeah. there. Um, great balance, athleticism to be able to even do that and then keep it moving. He like hurdles over the, the defender coming in here at his feet and he cuts it right up where he needs to. Comes down, he still makes a move and gets low and carries a couple guys. So he's a different player against Clemson and these guys later in the season. And Northwestern can you go back? has a good defense as well. I mean, and he he ran all over them. Yeah. Why doesn't he cut this inside? That lane right there. She's Palomar. Maybe seeing thirty three there. I don't know. I mean, seventy one's. Yeah. I mean, I would just run that dude over. So, I mean, well, both those linemen, the shit out of them. they should be doubling up to that guy anyway. <laughs> but I don't know. Just something I saw. Garrett Price's ass. Put him Jared right in his, his back. Body mouth. Fuck you, know you Garrett. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, wow. <laughs> now, I was going to say we just lost our PG rating, but now we lost our PG 13 rating too. <sighs> shit. Let's cut that out for sure. <laughs> he said I'm just, that out, sure. out of nowhere just says fuck you Garrett just out of nowhere <laughs> well he says that a lot in real life to be fair right <laughs> I'm not cutting that out because these <laughs> these videos aren't monetized because we show film so fuck you oh man alright Garrett it's your turn buddy are you ready my turn I didn't even realize we switched to the, to the Oklahoma tape alright get your so, motor mouth ready preface <laughs> you know you know how it is. Uh, I'll preface this with, I was already thinking, all right, Trey Sermon got opportunities to run the football as a true freshman. I'm going to take his junior year, which should, you know, he should be the most advanced by that point. He's playing with Jalen Hurts, which definitely gives him a little bit of an advantage. I picked two games where good statistically, and they're traditionally not good defenses, Texas Tech and Kansas. I I did have a hard time finding a lot of plays I really liked. Uh, you know, you know when people talk about being overwhelmed or underwhelmed, I was just very whelmed. Uh, <laughs> that's where, that's where I was Hold in all on. this. What so is that? is that a thing? I don't. It think is so. now. It is now. Yeah, actually, I'm... whelmed isn't officially a word, but I actually use it frequently. Uh, yeah. Is this a Garrettism? Is that whelm what this is? is a word? Whelm is and underwhelmed and overwhelmed. But being whelmed is not a thing, officially. Wow. I learned something tonight. Yeah. 
Wow. If a boat is whelmed, it means the waves are coming right up to the gunwales, the tip top of the sides of the boat, and some water is sometimes coming into the boat. <laughs> Roll the I tape, t- Jared. <laughs> I tell you what, this is this is a full. I mean, people that are watching this, you're going to get film stuff. You're going to get Rams comps every single time, and right? then you're going to get some d- new words that are vocabulary. Accurate. Vocabulary, yeah. There we go. Oh, All right, we'll let it. I'll let the first play run through each time. Will you? Oh, I will. Oh, look at that blocking back. He looks like a guy we should evaluate. What angle All do right. you like? So yeah, blocking I like back. I traditionally I like the the uh, the end zone view. Uh, so so yeah, this will be great. <laughs> so run it through kind of slow here. So he he hits the hole okay. He he finds the seam. And all it is is just him and the safety. I don't know. I don't know why he's like trying to do this airborne spin. I I'm not sure what he was trying to to do here. I would have just tried to run him over or, or or make a juke move or something. But that's something that I've seen a lot in his game that he really likes to jump. He really likes to hurdle. I thought it was a, a wasted opportunity. Anytime you have a straight line to the end zone, and at that point, he did. It was it was just him and the safety. That was all there was. Uh, I, I got to find a way to get to get in the end zone there. And I, it almost just felt like kind of a, a, a give up, honestly. I don't know. Didn't or at him. least try to hurdle him, hurdle him, not freaking do a front flip. I don't know what that was. Yeah. Does he even touch him? I don't know. Like, dude, if he hurdles him, he goes to the end zone. Yeah, like a true hurdle. I'm not going to come out here and tell people to hurdle people. Right. It is. We've seen Javid best. Do you guys know that one? Oh, yeah. I know Javid best. I had him a lot of fantasy teams. I know Javid best. I don't even know anymore. Okay. If it's, if it's like 20, Let's let's even say like 2008 and later, we're probably golden. Do you know who Algie Crumpler is? Of course, tight end for the uh, for the Falcons. You don't know him, Nick. Yeah, dude. Did here. he go to like? Uh, he went to some small school, like East Carolina, or like Tulane, Grambling or something. Oh, I'm gonna look it up now. I'm just see if I'm right. I just remember because I used the views Vic and Madden, and Algie Crumpler was a dog. Fearless Price. Yeah, TJ Duckett. North Carolina. That's close. Uh, Not close. North East Carolina? Carolina? Big school. Yeah, that's pretty close. You said, or Tulane. You were just going small school. I'm not giving you that one. All right. Once again, I like the end zone view here on this one. This was, this was a really good job, I thought, on his part. And if you can run it back from the beginning there, uh, the end zone view slowly. So this was one of the past uh, pickups. I thought he did a really good job here. He sees right away that that guy's coming. He What he does is he gets himself available to get inside that A gap, B gap right there uh, between 54 and, and uh, 56, forces him to go outside, and then just uses his momentum, good base, good hands, uses the momentum, go right around, opens up a massive lane for for Jalen Hurts. I think that's a really good job with 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 pass pro right there, especially understanding his specific quarterback. If he's going to be doing anything, he's going to be taken off. He gave him a great lane there, but he recognized that early and did a great job at getting out to him, I thought, there. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out if this is design. It oh, could yeah, have easily been. It is yeah. because I think of how, how he seals him that way. Yeah, and mm-hmm. the line's wiping – and look the at the look seat. at the receiver blocking already. Yeah, so it probably was. So he did a great job picking that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one negative on this play, I thought, I don't know, just something little at the end. He's just kind of, ah, shit, I cut it off. This one you can oh. see. But when watching this cut up, Garrett, I was like, at the end, he kind of just is walking. Around. Oh, instead of run running to his quarterback's aid. Yeah, I just a little you go back shit a little like bit? that, you know. Yeah. Go back to Rick. Well, if you know, just the little things. I mean, again, just like last week, look at the sound guy back there. His <laughs> arms, he's got to be strong. I mean, he's holding that there. He's honed in. Well, I always check did, you guys, did you guys see, and 
and I didn't necessarily pick it up in the other tape, so maybe you got better with it. It always drives me nuts how straight up and down Sermon is, too. I don't know how why. How straight up and down that referee is. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. But, like, literally, he's, like, standing, like, knees, knees like, locked. <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah, he does stand like that. I don't know. It's weird to me. But, anyway, on to the next one. Dude, but, yeah, I mean, there's games that I like of Sermon that I love, and there's games that I hate. Dude, Mel Kuyper has Sermon as his third ranked running back in this class right now. Is it who who of the big three is he over? Because no one declared. Is he over Javante or Najee yeah. or ETN? Uh it's Najee. I think it it's Najee and ETN. I don't know what order those two are in. Okay. And then Sermon. And then Sermon over Javante. Interesting. Mel, it's your job to do these deep dives. How, you, how you old were you guys when you guys knew who Mel Kuyper was? Probably How like old was I? 12, maybe. I always loved the draft. Me so. too. I watched the draft all day. Because it used to be all just like one day. Yeah, yeah, well, especially on Saturdays, they would have what? It was rounds. They used to do it, what, round one and two on the same night? And then they would do like three through seven on the next it, night. Well, when I used to watch day. it, one through three and then four through seven. But I... I watched taped NFL drafts on Saturdays as a kid. Nice. And I remember my dad, we would get the Kuiper guide, the blue guide. <laughs> and and I would go through it. I mean, 92, 93, 94. Like we would just watch them all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. Good, good male memory. Was it on two days? Yep. It was okay. I couldn't remember, but I remember, yeah, I'm like waking up early, mowing the grass and then I would come in and just like lay on the couch all day and watch the draft. Yep. And I had already, like, I knew the guys, and I don't know. All right. For this being a goal line run, this was really, really soft to me. Uh, especially, I think, that this time the other view shows it better. Almost tiptoeing up to the line. I don't know if he's trying to find a lane. I don't know if he's trying to show patience. But, like, there was no pop. There was no gusto. To, to to get him in the end zone and those are those are situations where you don't need to try to get you know uh, an extra yard or two you just got to get across the goal line lower your shoulder lower your pad level and get in uh, yeah i mean or have some patience like he didn't have to. yeah bounce try to bounce it something but it was just kind of like i'm just gonna nestle in and, and you know just be right here yeah now now if he tried to Jump the pile? Would you be okay with that? Th that this time, Garrett? I would be okay. At least show me some effort, like right. on something. Yeah, I'm with you. I, this is. I mean, when when he made the cut, there was only one defender there, but then that one guy split the second level, mm -hmm. and so you kind of got stood up. But it was just kind of like, yeah, okay. It, it was just a. It's just like he just wasn't really trying there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But a, that that lineman at the end getting low and trying to push him through, he put in more effort. Looks like he did. He did. Uh, let's move to the Texas Tech game. Uh-oh. I oh, don't know what that means. <laughs> All right, say so let's move to the Texas Tech game again. All right, let's move on over to the Texas Tech game here. Third and 24. Third and 24. Four minutes till half. You gotta love those That's situations. That's a white box. Okay, I'll, I'll let it, I'll let it go through. <laughs> I was about to say something to Nick, but I don't want, I'm not going to. <laughs> what? Something about a box. <laughs> going rowdy rich on us. I was gonna All say right. that's a good jam. It is. Okay, so so here's my. This is a both play for me. Uh, there were some positives. There was there were some negatives here. Good burst. I, I thought he 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 did a good job in the very beginning there. Uh, go ahead and run it through slow right right here. One negative is put your mouthpiece in. Yeah, protect those pearly whites, man. Good vision. Got skinny right there through the hole. Good mm -hmm. job. Cuts outside. Good job. And then why did he turn that back up field? It's third and twenty four. And he ran, he ran to where all of the defenders are. 
Yeah. If you go back to the other view, look who's on the outside. Literally nobody. There is nobody out there. Widen that and try to pick up, you know, as much as you can, get as close to the first down as you can. I, I just thought that was that was good. Next level, getting to the second level, I just think he I think it was a really, really bad misread on his part. See, I think twenty two is good leverage out out there on yeah. the lineman and I don't know. Maybe maybe he's maybe he gets off of that. But it's still like one D B versus turning it into where everyone is flowing from. Well, I mean, yeah, he's, it's 20, the same, he's a blocker up there, the two. I mean, really, the, the safety is going to come down outside or inside. I, I see what you mean, because the inside flow will get him, Garrett. Mm -hmm. To me, I think this is just natural. As a running back, you read the block and you cut opposite of it. Um, but I see what you mean, too. I, I couldn't be... Especially on third down and 24. I'm trying... They're going to just hand the ball off and I'm actually get, getting open. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to make a play. Yeah. I'm not trying to get 12 yards. I'm not trying to get 15 yards. I'm trying to get 24. Man, you got it's a, 14. It's like that's a harsh crit. Do you think he there. gets more if he goes outside here? I don't know. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, that guy's, that guy's flowing already. Fast. I'm oh, going to say I bet he does not get that. I, I think I, I so think too. Does. Look at the all of all of the the safety's yeah, momentum is already coming downhill. That's because he cut inside. Right, go back, cut in, go back in frame. Right there. Look at his angle there. I think he gets that. No. Let, let's pull. If you're watching, you let us know <laughs> if you think he cuts outside, he gets more than the 14 he got cutting inside there. Yeah, Easily. I don't think he does. I think he because it's he a good some... cut. It's a good cut after this to make the guy miss. Nah, I think he, he gets tackled within it, the U. It's it's third and fourteen, yeah. or it's third and twenty four. I'm just going to give Trey a compliment here. After this cut and all his contact, he still drives his legs to get a couple more yards. For sure, good run Trey. It's a good run. Garrett. That's why I said it was a both. I said it was <laughs> I a agree. both. I know. I heard you. <laughs> Disrespectful. Dude, Next everyone, play. Everyone says I'm too critical, Garrett. I'm trying to be positive. Forty-one thirteen. New year, yeah, and I'm positive. Second and seven. <laughs> Loved this run. He forces the defender to take a to to have the wrong angle here. Mm -hmm. Does a great job. He's turning it upfield. We see sixteen coming down. And then just all of a sudden, man, I'm just going to widen it a little bit. Does he even touch him? I'm not sure he even gets touched. Does a great job of just setting up the defender. And so that, that those are things that encourage me them. when, you know, when I see other plays and I'm not sure that he had, you know, a plan after he got certain, you know, a certain point downfield. I thought he did a good job of setting up the defender here, widening at the last second. Uh, because right now you have the 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 natural defender of the out of bounds, and that if that guy makes a tackle, he might not have gotten the first down. It would have been close. I have to go back and see uh, how close it would have been. But uh, he was right around that first down marker. Ends up getting a good seven eight yards beyond it. Anything, Nick? Well, yeah. If you. Start off and you look at his stance. It's so upright here. I Isn't it? it? I told you he's like he's like locked. Look at it. Like his knees are locked. <laughs> I know. It's like he's standing at a party, like awkwardly by the punch bowl. Maybe that's how he's taught, guys. But I, I running backs do stand higher. The one thing, can you go back to right? Just after the handoff. Hmm. I'm just trying to figure out this play because you got two guys pulling. One direction way. and blocking down the other direction. I, th I think it's. I think it's a it, the the choice is. I think it's like a QB power or a sweep almost, and he has the choice of handing it off if he wants to. Yeah, that must be what it is. Okay. No, I. I what you point out, I love Garrett. I also love this effort by thirty-seven. Look, look at him. He goes all out here and then flips over the top. Watch him trailing right now. Trailing. He's oh. making a play. Other we don't angle study defense here. Other angle. <laughs> 
I'm just looking for positive every play, guys. Nah, I feel you. That was a nice play. How many clips you got here, Garrett? Yeah. I have six. Jeez, oh man. Oh, oh, oh yeah, baby. This is the last one. You and got then on what a I sweet, need. sweet note here. Sweet, is this sweet the same? note. No. So, so now he goes with the pullers. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's similar. a. It's almost like a trap in a way. It's like power. Whoa, that's a good effort there by that defender. <laughs> He he sees a lot of this really really well here. Yeah, he saw he saw that safety was that a Safe. safety or a corner, just going balls out to try to make that play way over pursuing, easy cut back and just makes him fall. Um, but yeah, it was just other than that though, it was just a lot of little moves. Before that, it, it wasn't a lot of big moves, but just enough to all right, you 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 swipe me here, yeah, you you, you grab a little bit of jersey there, but. Just a lot of subtle moves, and I think he utilizes his skill set, gets up field really well. Um, yeah, I, this was these last two runs were what gave me hope because you know I, I watched the entire Kansas game and I wasn't excited. I watched most of of this game, wasn't excited, and then I saw these couple runs here at the end, and these were the things that told me, you know what, maybe. Maybe there is enough there. Six to midnight. Is, you're, is you're, it going to be me there's enough? A chance. Is there going to be enough to get him to be a day two pick? I don't know. No. It's going to be close. Can you go back? I can. Thank you. So the what I my favorite part of this run is right when he cuts inside of the two pullers. Stop it. If you can go slow here. There's there's the defenders. Okay. And right here, he could go straight up field. He feels this. So he could be really tight to the blocker, and he's not. He feels this, and he widens just a little bit. Not a ton. Just enough to avoid them, and then stays up field instead of continuing outside. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's really, really efficient. Again. Really efficient mover right there. These are the things that I loved early on with him. I thought he had great vision when mm -hmm. I studied him early. Um, I studied a lot of his freshman tape, actually. He had a really good freshman season at Oklahoma. I don't have the stats Baker, right in front no. of me. But, um, yeah, I mean, he had a great game versus Ohio State that year with Baker Mayfield. But, dude, he's played with some great quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, dude. Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields. Yeah. They're okay. So the one, one thing to think about, though, we talked about this earlier, is so we talked about two pullers there, right? Some pullers on some previous plays. I mean, that's that's a different scheme. Completely different. Gap scheme when and versus the zone scheme, which mm -hmm. is different rules, different things you're reading. So that it could take us some time, you know, to adjust. Definitely. And it could play to his benefit going to the next level, playing in two different style schemes, you know? Mm -hmm. For I, sure. So that wraps is it, up. This is a this is a home game, right? Yeah. For Oklahoma, yeah. Why aren't the cheerleaders more hyped about that touchdown? <laughs> they hate him. Just kidding. Well, what's the, I, don't I think they're it. killing I mean, them. Yeah, it's, it's a blowout game. That doesn't. Then your job is to cheer and get the crowd pumped up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do your job. Tell them. But yeah, I, yeah, I don't get it. Touchdown. I don't understand. Why are you there? So let me ask you guys, where do you think he'll get drafted? Like, do you have a round in mind? I, I think early round four. Okay. Round five. Yeah, I think he's a day three guy, too. Round five, late four is kind of where I'm thinking as well. Um, but that's that's a couple of reasons for that. I mean, it's not just there are some good backs ahead of him. I mean, there's the really good three. There's a few others that we like more than him. Mm -hmm. But also, there's, a, there's a, a running back for agent class. And we're getting – things have switched – we're, we're getting saturated right now with running backs. It's like, where, where's James Conner, Chris Carson, Aaron Jones going to go? Then where are these three good guys going to go? Then the other fillers, it's like, why would you spend a higher pick than you need to on a guy like Trey Sermon? Yeah. Nope. I totally agree. Uh, there's, 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 some, there's a lot of guys that I think are in a similar range as Trey Sermon. So I'm curious to see. You're right, Nick? 
I just, I finally got, I, I know who it is. I'm hyped about now. You go just, just highlight with your, <laughs> see the guy in the white near in the brick over there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there it is. See, he's, he's hyped for the touchdown. One person. <laughs> I can Commend see you. it all over your face. I'm trying to talk and I can see it all over your face. Like something just hit you. If, if that's, Hey, if that's <laughs> you, let us know. Okay. Free Don Sinners t-shirt. Might get you on the show. You need you need your your moment of fame because you celebrated something worth celebrating. <laughs> um, but but yeah, you... there, I think I think there's a lot of running backs that are going to be in a similar range as him. I'll be curious to see where the draft capital lands with with him, with Kylan Hill, with uh, Ramondre Stevenson, with um, Did, Michael uh, Carter, Michael Carter. Did you see that block Stevenson had earlier? I know I was joking. You see that block? Yeah, it was nice. Hit him and then turned him. I mean, that's a good technique. I, I've the the little bit of Stevenson I've seen, and I I saw some study in these games. I was impressed. You like I was impressed Foreman. with what I saw. So um, we'll have to get we we'll have to do one on him. Do you think he's a dynasty fantasy football relevant player? No. Obviously, he's going to get drafted in rookie drafts if we think he's yep. a day three guy. If he's like probably for like sure, he'll probably get drafted in round, round four. You think he's round two? Yeah. So, I think on name alone, he'll go in the back of the second round. Yeah, uh, here's here's the deal. So this is how I value these running backs. If I don't see, he's a guy I think that's above average to good in a lot of areas. He's not great at anything. So yeah, where does he, he win at the next level? Right, yeah, yeah. How would he get so many touches at the next level? And, and I don't see that. Yeah. So then I don't really want to roster him. It's not that I don't like him. It's, is he going to be a difference maker? Because then he has to difference make on, on the field and then it has to work fantasy, you know? Yeah, Like if right. he's great at catching the ball, that's different. Okay, one thing or... And you know, he's a good receiver. He's not, he's not, not a guy that you're going to specifically put in. Or, yeah, right. TJ Yeldon. Yeah, we saw Not that great at out. anything. Yeah, no, I agree with you guys. Um, like I said, you know, I've pumped them up on Twitter, but that was pretty early on, and uh, I think the hype train has gotten a little out of control, especially with Mike Mel Kuyper and having him third in the class at running back right now. I think that's a, way too high. Um, not sure he'll even be in my top five, but I'll say that there's a big battle for that fifth spot for me right now. Uh, there's all those guys I just mentioned are all like candidates to potentially be in that in that final that final spot. Who's poor then? Kenneth Gainwell. Kenny G. My oh boy. It's um, kind of weird because I feel like the first three guys are kind of a tier, and then like Kenneth Gainwell's his own awkward tier there, and then then everybody else. Garrett and I are going to the Senior Bowl next week. Should be fun. Did we tell you that, Nick? I, I had to find out on Twitter. I thought yeah, we were friends. Yeah, I don't friends. think we even told you that. Um, Thanks for the invite. Dude, I'm um, looking forward to seeing Elijah Nick, you want to come to the senior bowl? I already got plans. Yeah, yeah, you can take Rich's pass. Yeah, you can, you can be Rich Dotson for the week. I, I heard he's off the pod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you yeah, see that? Bernie. I made that this morning. <laughs> Bernie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, Najee Harris is going to the senior bowl. Um I like. I want to see Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. Um, he's a guy that I've seen a little bit on that I do like. Um, Gray will be there. Well, he probably won't be able to play with all nah. his collarbone stuff, though. Yeah, um, broke his collarbone. Um, you know what I like about that for Najee or any player is I know there's like this fear of you know things could go wrong. I want a guy that wants to compete. Yeah. Give every opportunity to always compete. Show you want you think Tom Brady is going to be like oh no I'm going to sit like he's going to compete every chance he can you want a guy that that's hungry mm -hmm. not a I'm going to sit out and play this you know Jekyll and Hyde thing yeah Michael Carter will be there too Garrett so yep. we'll get the opportunity Kylan will be some, there yeah um so yeah follow us on uh, next week because we'll be posting a ton of videos and stuff um doing yep. some breakdowns and whatnot. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to maybe talk to a few people that are there, uh, like to bump yep. into some draft analysts in the community and stuff. So hey, Garrett had some good questions. 
Was that last year? Or year before? Yeah, at the uh, at the combine. Yeah, man. Get those questions ready. Oh man, the, it's fun. I love I love doing that stuff. So yeah, we'll be we'll, we'll, we'll be networking. We'll be network. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to find the Senior Bowl equivalent of the bench press. And I'm gonna be there. <laughs> I'm gonna have it ready. You can be the hype guy. Yeah. <laughs> so All right. uh, wrapping we up keep, here. We, we keep talking. Let's go. Yeah. Um, check out DynastyNerds.com. Check out the film room we have there. We have a ton of different cut-ups of all these different 2021 eligible rookies coming in this rookie class. Um, all the cut-ups are specifically made for that player, each player they're on the field. As soon as that player is out of the play, the it moves on to the next play. So it's really efficient film that you can check out while you're taking a shit uh, five to six minutes at a time. But um, the show. <laughs> uh yeah make sure you uh like the video subscribe comment hit the little bell notification so you're notified next time we post another video but uh nick garrett you got anything else you want to say nope. I'm, I, I'm almost ready just to leave this is dragging out at the end so much oh shut up <laughs> see you guys <laughs>